Virtual reality, the most engaging technology of our time, takes you on an unforgettable adventure across the ages. Welcome, cadet, to the Munda Museo International Research Mission. You'll be traveling back to the Jurassic period to collect data, vital for the future of life on Earth. Cadet! An ancient virus has escaped from the Arctic ice. We cannot stop it. The key must be in the past. We're counting on you. Find it. prepared for another night? Please don't leave me alone with these monsters. Hey guys, this is a one versus one replay on gallery. So I'm defending uh, over here. So I use the default class loadout, one assault, SMD, shotgun, and sniper. Uh, the custom weapons I'm using is a unsilenced AK, uh, unsilenced P90, unsilenced spaz shotgun, and unsilenced 50 cal. So I'm going against DFDF, he's spawning the top left. So he has to pick up the bomb and plant either here or here, and I have to prevent him from doing that. So at the start, I move my uh, two close range uh, classes up uh, to cover this area uh, to watch to see if he's going to be planting here. And I, I move my uh, longer range uh, guys down to cover this lane. So at the start, he throws a, a smoke over here. So I'm assuming he might be uh, running down here, but it could be a mind game. But uh, just to make sure that uh, I don't snipe him uh, along this, uh, this line of sight. Um, so he puts down the smoke, and um, so I give my shotgun here um, armor, because I usually do that just in case that he has a sniper set up, or he throws a bunch of frags, uh, then I have, uh, it'll hopefully keep him alive, um, so he could get uh, over behind this wall. 
And since there's a smoke over here, I move my assault out here to watch the smoke, uh, just making sure that he doesn't run through it and it was just like a decoy or something. So he, the first thing I see is uh, these two guys. He has a sniper and the assault with uh, armor and his assault has an AK, probably a longer range AK with a scope on it. And uh, But basically my sniper's set up, so I'm gonna get the first shot off. And um, one shot won't kill the assault because he has armor, but it will kill the sniper. And that's exactly what it yeah. does. Um, my first shot kills the sniper and he basically runs away with his assault. And I move my assault over here and looks uh, and looking through these two columns in this space, uh, just in case that he ran in this direction, which he didn't. So the next thing I see is he throws uh, smoke up here. So I'm thinking maybe he might be rushing this area um, uh, since I'm watching uh, this lower uh, bomb plant site. So the next thing I do is like I I move my uh, SMG back here to cover the smoke, but not too close to the smoke, just in case he runs through with uh, shotguns. And I'm, I'm assuming that he might be doing that, so I uh, give her armor and uh, just backs out and watches it. And then I have my shotgun peek out and throw a flash here just to see if I could get a hit marker and see maybe he has more guys here. And I threw another flash through the smoke here to see if I get a hit marker over here because I know his assault's around here. So I got a hit marker over here, and if you look at the minimap, I see one guy here in red, uh, on the red dot, in which he uh, got hit with the flash. And I see his assault again with full health, and he has armor on. But uh, my sniper is still here behind this cover bench waiting, and uh, I'm going to take another shot off on him. Throwing fire. So I'm hoping to like basically cut this assault off. Here, so I block the path with an uh, incendiary grenade, and I'm going to get a shot off here uh, on his assault. So the assault doesn't get killed because he's shooting over cover, and he doesn't see his full body, so he's lucky. This assault's lucky, but he's uh, really damaged. And the fire grenade is uh, starting to spread. So in this case, he moves his shotgun through the smoke just to peek out, and he runs back in just to gain some intel. So... Um, uh, so I thought that was a little interesting, and I know he, he has a shotgun now because he just ran through and ran back. Uh, but this is a nice fire here, which uh, kind of like blocks off this path, and uh, keeps his army spread out. So his assault is down here somewhere, and he throws a, a frag here trying to hit my sniper, and then he has another guy throw a, a flash at me and uh, will blind my sniper here, and I know he has that assault running around down here. So I get blinded, so I'm running my uh, sniper all the way around, and for some reason he runs away, I think, from the fire, and he runs in this direction, but he doesn't know my assault is waiting in this area here, and gets a, like, a lucky shot and gets to shoot him in the back. So in this case, fire. now the bomb is down. Um, so I see the bombs down here, so I throw in my last fire grenade here to block up this path, so I could basically lock down, uh, lock down uh, the bomb in which he has to go and pick it up. And I see his assault again, and this guy I can never kill. He just keeps running back and forth. Uh, but he was able to throw a frag right on top of my assault. But luckily, I have uh, armor on him. And I was able to pick the right person and the right booster, and I got lucky, basically. So here, he's really damaged, but he's not dead. And I have the fire raging on here and basically protecting the bomb site. And I'm moving all my guys down to watch the bomb and he has two guys left. I know he has assault here, and I don't know who the last guy is. Enemy so but basically, everyone's watching this area. A sniper could shoot over the uh, fire. And over here, I just threw a uh, throwing axe. It seemed like I could get lucky, but I missed. So now I'm rotating all my guys around, trying to uh, protect the bomb. I know it's assault fire. around here, and he basically took a few shots on my SMG, and he's basically rotating back uh, to see the bomb. Enemy so in this situation, I just saw, the SMG just saw a shotgun run back here. So I'm, 
so he's behind us and getting pretty close so it's a little dangerous he could get he could kill my assault and sniper so I have to quickly finish off his assault and um, take out his shot. so which is what I did he uh, we got our last shot on and finally killed his assault here and now we all turned around and I moved all my guys to aim at the shotgunner and he's probably trying to just run and pick up the bomb but uh, he's surrounded basically. Clear. And that's how the game was uh, finished. So basically, I um, was able to keep uh, all my guys alive and protect both bomb sites. Hi, I'm Tony from Ant Workshop, the developer of Binaries, a brand new platform game coming out soon. People sometimes find the gameplay of Binaries tricky to understand uh, what's good about it, what's unique about it. So I thought instead of just using words, I would record a little video and kind of talk you through what's going on in the game. So let's get started on the first level. So here we've got our two uh, heroes, I guess you'd say, uh, blue and orange. So one of the unique things about the game is the dual movement. Uh, when I press right on the joystick, they both move right, or when I jump, they both jump. And the goal of every level is to get blue into the blue checkerboard area and orange into the orange checkerboard area. And you can see here we've got time goals and rankings, so the game's always uh, judging how well you did on a level. So even though I've finished this level, um, I've got room to improve there. So let's have a look at a harder level. So a big difference you can see here is that the uh, blue and orange are both in the same space. They're not separated out into different parts of the screen anymore. And this allows you to see how the colours affect the game. You can see here, orange isn't hurt by blue hazards and vice versa. That makes it much tougher to try and pick a route through the level. You're not only thinking about trying to get them to their own goals, you're trying to notice which hazards are surrounding them and if you jump or if you move in a certain direction at a certain time, are they going to get hit by an orange bullet or a blue bullet or what spikes are around them, that kind of thing. In fact, this level's a bit too tough for me right now. Um, I'm going to find an easier one to go and play. You briefly saw the map before, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more now. Whenever you complete a level, you unlock all the levels that are adjacent to it, and this means that you can pick your own route through the game and what order you play at every level. And if you're finding a level too hard, or you want another challenge, you can always just quit straight back to the map and play something else. And the map also shows your current best times and the rank for every level. And as well as showing your general gameplay stats, such as uh, how much of the game you've completed, how many times you've died, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to pick a different level now and uh, shut up while I concentrate on finishing it. So I'm going to go very quiet all of a sudden. Oh. There we go, and an S rank as well, so I've got the highest rank that I can get on this level. Um, I can always come back and replay it and try and uh, cut seconds or fractions of a second off my time. Even the S rank scores can be improved on. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and watching me play and finding out a little bit more about the game. Binaries is released for Windows and Mac on Steam on April the 4th, and it's coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One later in the year. The Steam Store page is live right now if you want to go and wishlist it or buy it depending on when it is that you're watching this video. And you can always visit www.playbinaries.com for more information. And thanks again for being interested enough in our game to watch this video to the very end.
Salutations! Welcome to week four of my virtual object experimentation devlog. We're going to start off just like last week with a little sound check for, for you, as there's going to be some pretty loud sound effects here. So this is about to be loud, just in case, make sure your sound isn't up too high. Awesome. So if that was all right, everything else should be. So let's start out with the main attraction of this week. This has been such a pain in my butt, but absolutely worth it. Um, this is a AR-15 modeled by the incredible Night Frontier on the Unity Asset Store, and then chopped apart in part by him and part by me. He made a wonderful top sight, which I'll show you in a moment. This is easily the most complex virtual object I've put together. I did not know just how complex an AR-15 was until attempting to simulate it. So where to start? Well, let's just do the loading procedure for it. We have a magazine, just like the handgun. Pop that in. We grab the charging lever on the rear. Pop it back. I still had a round chambered. Let that snap forward. And then we ensure that the firing selector here is on the correct setting. So that's full, that's safe. This is semi. Wonderful. And this is fully auto. Excellent. It's empty. We can dump a mag out. Grab another one here. The bolt should be locked back as we ran dry with a mag still in. So we can just hit right here the bolt release. Wonderful. And that'll slam the bolt forward. I'll pop this back out momentarily. The charging lever, and this was even more of a pain to get right. I've been told that with this lever, if instead of letting it snap forward, if you ride it forward with your hand, the bolt tends to not come forward all the way. It won't push the round all the way into the chamber. And so to fix that, you have to slap the forward assist. Wonderful. So all that's in there. Seriously, it was such a pain. Oh, and I'm dropping things. Let's grab another mag. And then to actually aim it, we've got a couple options here. We've got, as I mentioned before, the brand new top sight, which is better for short range. I'll pull this, I'll take a look down this here. Wonderful. And there's a couple options for it. We can change the aperture that's being used. This, this one's so tiny that I question its utility, honestly. Let's see if we can. Wonderful. And in addition to changing the aperture, we can actually zero it in by, at the moment, just toggling between five different elevations for the back sight. The highest will, of course, zero it in fairly close to us. Wonderful. In addition, we can pull that off and pop on an optic. For those of you who are, you know, gun folk, you'll be like, when we look through this and actually see a reticule, you'll be like, what are you doing? This is just an amplifier. I don't have a good red dot model at the moment. So in this case, it's unrealistically a combination. So with this, we can check out things at distance and try to hit them. Now you'll notice Trying to aim at something about 50 meters away like that is a pretty jittery experience. Now, I think, honestly, this is mostly my hand and not the tracking. Um, and obviously, we can't actually get this into our shoulder the way we would a real rifle. And so this is my first attempt. It's not perfect. But the way this works is that if you grab the foregrip, instead of using the actual position of the hand, it uses a filtered version. Let me actually get some ammo here. There we go. So 
So just to compare, once the targets come back up, here it is without, here it is with. So I'm not in love with it. Um, it still drifts a little bit too much. Maybe I just need a better filtering schema for it. I also may, instead of having this trigger when you grab the foregrip, I may create a trigger volume where the shoulder is. So basically, as long as the weapon is placed into your shoulder, the same sort of filtering happens. I haven't had enough time to, uh, to try out both options. Thus far, it's been a absolute blast to shoot. All right, on to the next thing. Oh, I have forgotten to do this for two videos straight, so I'm going to do it right now, because several folk have asked about with the shotgun, once you fire it and pop it open, some have asked, you know, this should it should auto-eject, or there should be some other way of getting the shells out of the shotgun other than pulling them out. I actually implemented this two weeks ago. You can actually just jerk the shotgun back and the shells become physical and they fall out. So I wanted to show that briefly. Wonderful. On to some smaller and, and goofier things. I've been playing with a number of different things. I, uh, I don't know what possessed me to do this, but do any of you remember that old toy where really crappy toy if you think about it where you have a little can like this with a farm animal on it and you Meh. just had to this one's fred the pig he's my favorite and then finally in terms of the next object we have both a banana grenade because why not and a flipzo to not, you know, trademarks and all, lighter. So the way this works is that we can either flick it open with the touchpad and then light it, or if it wants to behave, open and shut it with the angular velocity of the controller. Flame's not perfect, but it'll do for now. <gasps> oh, that was a terrible throw if I was meaning to hit the boxes. <laughs> yeah, my, there we go. Awesome. So got all that working. And then just, just to talk about the scene for a little bit, as you can see, it's it's not the prettiest thing on the planet. I've been playing around with blocking out and with lighting schemas. Um, any of you doing VR dev know that from a performance standpoint, you need to keep lights on as few things as possible, or at least multiple lights. So right now what I'm playing around with is a schema where I have, I have a spotlight that's back up there that's hitting everything in the near field with really high resolution shadows, which is why that looks nice. And that's the only lighting other than ambient that's hitting everything here. And then I have a directional light with a shadow that's at a lower quality hitting the rest of the environment. Um, that's incidentally why this area has been placed in shadow from it. So it isn't quite so obvious that the directional light isn't hitting it at all. And I'm hoping that this ends up working out to be a good schema for this environment. Because I'd like to fill this up with lots of exploding targets and other decorations, some catwalks up there, etc. So, but yeah, but seems to be running really well. I still haven't 970 tested the frame times, but on my Titan X, my GPU times are about three and a half milliseconds for this scene at its worst. So, that's working well. So yeah, so thanks for tuning again this week. I will, as always, have more next week for you. Peace.